So, good afternoon. Your favorite mechanics are back at it. I don't know what we call that Clay's uh, Super Garage, or <laughs> what is, are we going to tell? What we're going to call this it? Clay? Is the World Garage. That's the World Garage. That sounds good. So today we're going to do a few more things, and I'm going to turn the camera. We're just saying hi real quick as the intro, and then I'm going to go. Clay and I we're going to go through and tell you what we're going to be doing today. And we found the exact cause of why he had fuel coming out of his exhaust. And of course, uh, no matter what um, fuel injection system you have, fuel coming out of the exhaust means no ignition. And we will show you why, and I have never seen anything like this. So we see you in a second here. So the first thing I wanted to show you here now is the, this is something I've never seen. Let me see that we can get this zoomed in properly. This is one of the spark plugs Clay pulled out of his car while I was working on, I think removing the alternator by that point, right? right. And as you can see, look at the picture here. See this? Can you see the, the screen here, Clay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And this is basically, it's not a full short. I tested the um, resistance here on this spark plug on the left one. And there's six kilo ohm between the left connection and the exact center of the uh, pin of the um, anode, I think that's what they call that. And so six kilo ohm plugs, I'm not quite sure if these are the correct plugs in the first place. And as you can see them, some of them were pretty wet. And the gap was different virtually on every one of them. But they're pretty, uh, the car was running pretty rich, and we will explain this here in a minute why. But the reason for the unburned fuel exiting through the exhaust is this puppy here, this spark plug. This is probably as close as I can get in. I have never seen anything like this. I do not even know how you can get a spark plug adjusted that the, uh, the ground thing goes that close to the anode side and basically there's no more sparking at this. So this is the cause for the fuel leak. Now, Clay told me when we first talked about this too, that the frequency valve was missing. Now again, this is a 1980 model. So this is the one which has already the newer version of the CIS system, the K-Jectronic, with a analog computer they haven't used the microchip yet in there this was still analog and clay said that this was missing so i said if this is a 1980s car we should have a switch on the throttle body and he said no there's no switch there's no switch someone took the switch would you mind bringing us the switch real quick and of course i looked up the manual and we do have a computer, an analog computer underneath here. You can see this over voltage protection relay here and the CIS computer, first analog computer they built. Then we found our switch. It was mounted to it, to our, that's good, to the throttle body, but you can see the wires, someone broke this thing off. And the other end of this whole thing there should be a connector on here, is this part here. So what we guess is some time ago, because this damage occurred, I would say years ago, this is not something which happened here recently in the last two years, is that one of the previous owners had this switch go out. This switch goes out, then the frequency valve doesn't work right anymore. Your car is gonna run too rich or too lean, most likely too rich. That is indicated by the black spark plugs. So some genius went ahead and thought they're going to remove the frequency valve. And then they just going to bypass this on the fuel distributor. So what they did is they cut off this here, which is the feed line for this. This is basically it. And they basically just clamped this thing down. And the rest of it is missing everything related to the frequency valve, the two pipes which connect to the system, the wiring harness is here. So it was connected at one point, but again, looking at this, this was done quite some time ago. 
So this happened to the previous owner. So with this, we know now for sure we have a 1980 model with the K-Jet Tonic third version of this thing. And uh, again, as we have the transistorized ignition system here, which is also analog. And we have the relay, the fuel pump relay with uh, RPM limiter in here. And this is now the first version, which like I said in the other video, creates the TD signal, which you have in all the W126 versions of the V8s basically, and on the other cars as well. So this was the first one which had the pickup, in this case from the distributor, into the uh, ignition unit and from here they have the TD output. This is starting with model year 1980. So from uh, September 1979 until August of 1980, 1980. And the TD signal then from here goes to your diagnostic socket where you can pick it up. It goes also from the transistorized uh, ignition unit to the idle, uh, not idle speed control valve, I wanted to say, but to the fuel pump relay and it will cut off the fuel pump at 5,300 RPM. And the signal goes to the speedometer. It goes uh, also over to the analog CIS computer. I say this again, this is an analog fuel injection system. So we have the, the frequency valve became later on the EHA valve, which is integrated or screwed onto the fuel distributor on the later 117 and 116 engines. And the next thing, Clay and I, this is just the basics. So we got everything sorted out. We know now we have the right engine in the right car with the right wiring harness. So none of this was changed. Some accident happened to the switch that that switch wire either got on an exhaust pipe or it got hot for whatever reason. Someone may, may have welded something, who knows. But it is there and we probably have to overhaul the... Um, uh, analog computer to make sure that none of the transistors went to transistor heaven uh, with all these shorted wires we have in here. Um, the next thing, what, what the thing, what we really wanted to do today is we want to take out the timing chain guide, the tensioner guide on this side. We're going to leave the rest of it in there. I took already the cover screw off, which is the which is this hole here we will show this here in a minute and then we're going to take off we secure the chain which is really not necessary but we're going to put the chain onto the um, uh, sprocket and then we're going to remove the sprocket from the camshaft here and as you can see i have removed already the rocker arms and the shim plates and the reason for this is we put them carefully down here and we have them completely labeled. So that is very, very important when you take them out. And the tool to do this with is this here. This is your million dollar tool. You can't do this without it. And when the next step now is we're gonna remove the rocker arms here too. Whenever I work, this is just me, I work on these chains is because it is so easy to get the timing off and then you have a valve bumping into a piston when you go through it even by hand you will leave an imprint on the piston and um, that is something i really don't want to happen i don't want to happen on my car and i sure don't want to have this happen on someone else's car you know uh, especially with clay but any person i work you know that is just something i don't want so what, what I do is I remove all rocker arms and I put them to the side because this way everything is freewheeling, all valves are closed and I don't have to worry about whether the timing is correct or not. I will show you in these videos exactly on how to get the timing 100% right no matter how mixed up it is because it is pretty straightforward and simple. So this is not something where you have to go to I don't know, to mechanic school, the school uh, 
Clay and I went to is what hot knocks, right? Hard knocks. <laughs> yeah, we got a, we got a, uh, we got a PhD. We are poor, hungry, and dirty, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, we aren't. It was just, but anyway, you will be able to get this going. My experience is this: that most people uh, will not or do not like to work on V8 engines because of the timing chains and the setup of those in case that you lose the timing that they're out of sequence and that stuff. So we will explain this exactly on how this is done. All right, that will be the next rolling. segment. Oh, okay, we're rolling. Clay said we're rolling. So here you can see the tool and you have the hook side here and the release side. This is the part which is gonna compress the spring, the valve springs down. So what you do is you insert the hooks here on the camshaft on the first one, it's always a little bit tricky. And you set this here, that it sits right on top of your valve. And then you just depress this and you lift the rocker arm up and you push it out towards the inside of the engine. And here's our first rocker arm. Then you have to check it. And I take out the shims right at that point. And I put the tool away and then I put this immediately into our box <coughs> going now this way and setting this in and this is you can repeat this eight times it takes 30 seconds and now you can see this we're going to the next one and you can see the lobe actually is down which means I have to get the engine over a little bit to release the spring fully. So this is good enough. This will clear my valve through. We see now the, the lobe has moved up. I put my hook around it. I insert this right on top here. I push down. And sometimes they're a little bit sticky from the old oil. And you move this out. And here's the next one. You put the tool away. You take the shim out and you put it in the box. Don't get them mixed up. This is a million dollars at work here. And we're going to do the next one. We're just going to do the whole bank. Then you can see on how easy this actually is. We check the lobe for clearance. I'm going to go around it a little bit. So we got the lobe back on this side, Oops. this way, and you go in, here it is, next one, put this to the side, and then immediately, this is number three, that goes into spot number three. This is almost like making babies. Right, Clay? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotta get it right. Yeah. There it is. Alrighty. Sometimes they stick a little bit, and this is from the oil in there. And then we're gonna clean them up. Four. Next one, lobe. Oops, I got a little bit off key here. But this is good. Uh, yeah, and this is how old guys spend their time working. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, we push this down. Next one out. This is the original Mercedes Benz one, which is now from Baum Tools. But this is the exact same one you see in the Mercedes Benz service manuals. And uh, here it comes. When they stick, just wiggle them a little bit and they will come out. That is number five. 
I'm almost done. Yeah, and the lobe stays up. You want the lobes to be either coming out on the side, either side or up anywhere in this 180 degree turn. This way you don't get tangled up with the rocker arm in the, um, you know, and the lobes trying to get this out just can get a little bit tight and then you really have a hard time getting them out. And they go in the same way, basically. So this is number six. Now comes seven. The two last ones are a little bit tricky to get to, but by the time you get to the back ones, you should have had some experience and see, feel for this tool. That is number seven. And now the last one. And here it comes. Alrighty. Okay. And how do they say on television? We will be back right after this. After this word from our sponsors. That's right. Oh. Thank you. We're rolling. Play set, we're rolling. Okay, so we're gonna pull out the pin, which I started to pull out already. Uh, here for the timing chain no chain tensioner guide and the way I did this on this one you can actually score it in and this is an M6 I believe it is see and then it just comes out like this it's just screwed in here whoops and here comes our guide Ooh. there we go ah, yeah. and now let's take a closer look at this here you can see and how worn in this is. And this is 108,000 original miles. So this is what this thing looks like. The guide itself just needs to be cleaned. This is all good. So what clay needs is only the plastic cover here. We just need to get this new. And you can see here, I secured the chain on this side here. This is now freewheeling here. And there's nothing which can happen because I show you guys, like I said, is this is real simple to adjust the timing because we have the distributor out of the loop and we can set the distributor in any way we want. So all we need to make sure then once we get this aligned, we can walk the, uh, the sprocket through any way we want. But the next thing here is we're gonna change the chain as soon as we're gonna get a replacement chain. And then these guides here are going to come out as well. And then we're going to replace those. And uh, we're going to chain, we're going to put the, let's see, we're going to replace the guides first because this one here is broke. There's only half of it left. And we're going to also remove then this, this tooth here. And uh, then we can get this whole thing here uh, back together the way we need it. So, we're about, I would say, halfway into this and halfway done. And we will be back after this message just with more. Where's the music? Where's Paul Schaefer? Where's Paul Schaefer and the CBS Orchestra, right? <laughs> 